Now, I had to figure out what to what, what to cover tonight, and I decided that we've been, we've been talking about it a lot, especially in the last session about options and so on, a thing which I would call rolling channels. This is very interesting uh, technique or and or method to find trades, especially when the market is just kind of meandering around. This can be really good. A rolling channel is when a stock is trading in a channel. Those two lines <coughs> represent a, a trading range. And, you know, the stock trades like thus. You know, maybe not precisely like that. I, you rarely see a perfect triangle wave like that. But for the most part, that's the way they trade. Now, some stocks trade way better than others in a, ch in a channel. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, here's an example. I found a chart that, that has a really classic uh, channel trade here. Um, if you look at this, it, uh, there's two channels that we're forming here over time. Uh, one of them is right back here. You see, you could just draw like a ruler. Particularly the bottom side of that channel, it's like clockwork. Bounces there, it bounces there, it bounces there, it bounces there, it bounces there, and then it bounces there. Every one of those guys you could have caught, you know, and wrote it up to the top channel, which is that line I drew there. Right now, it, it broke through the channel and then it fell, you know, right here. But uh, notice it forms a whole new channel right there. There's your top. And there's your bottom. I didn't draw a very good line, but you see, you get the idea. So this is still channeling once again. So this this particular stock, the, the symbol is CNX, um, I found by, you know, walking through a bunch of charts, and this one jumped out as being a strong channel. Now, the advantage is that you can catch these on the top, say, you know, shorts or put options, or catch them on the bottom with longs. And... Uh, the only the only downside to channel trading is that you're going to be eventually wrong. And now what I mean by that is, uh, let's take uh, let's take uh, this guy here. See if you were trading the, the let's say you were going short on the top channel, okay? You would have been semi wrong right here. You would have had a little scare, but you would have been right. So eventually, but see you would have been right here, here, here sort of right here you may you might have bailed out here but you would have been right here okay the problem is <clears throat> is that eventually you'd be really wrong on a short because see right here it busted through the channel and you would have been stopped out or or at least you should have been you shouldn't have let let yourself get hammered like that so the bad news is on channel trading you're eventually going to be wrong because eventually that stock's going to bust through its channel one way or another the good news is, look how many times you were right on a, on, a, on a stock that trades a solid channel. You'd have been right one, two, three, four. Let, let's say you, you would have lost on that one. So it's, it looks like five times you would have been, no, six times you would have been solidly right and then one time wrong. That's not a bad percentage, so keep that in mind. Same thing here. You, if you go long on the, on the bottom channel, you'd be semi-wrong here. And when I say semi-wrong, it all depends on how much nerve you had. Because uh, it, if you would have gone along right here, it would have busted through the channel, and you might have panicked and, and, you know, got out, which is fine. Maybe you should. But, okay, wrong there. However, you'd be right here, 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 and here, and here. Now here you'd be semi-wrong. So you're, you're right way more than wrong on a solid channel. That's the point I'm trying to make. Remember, you can't win every trade. So that's not a bad uh, uh, percent. Now, <clears throat> what I'm showing here, now this is, this is what I really wanted to show tonight. I mean, it's, it's all well and good in theory to say, oh, yeah, you can find a good channel and trade it. But, well, well what stock? I mean, there's, there's 2,200 stocks that we monitor in PowerScan. And last week, I mentioned that channeling is a really good technique, especially for covered calls. 
because you can sell calls at the top of a channel and buy them back at the bottom of the channel, for example. Um, and I said that I'm thinking of creating a program that'll scan all the stocks and return to you, to return to us, the, uh, the best channeling stocks. And then it dawned on me that I don't have to create the program. It's sitting there right in front of us on a, on a silver platter. You can create a filter that does exactly that, returns good, strong channeling stocks, believe it or not. Now, there's no such thing as a channeling filter or channeling uh, formula. But here's what we do have, and I forgot all about this. So power scan is even more powerful than <laughs> even I thought. And that's just, just the support and resistance formula. Now, let me go over what, what this formula does, because a lot of people don't, don't even myself included, forget the, its power. Um, let me get a little drawing pen here, and I'll show what I'm talking about. Okay. The step period, of course, is like any other filter. It's the uh, how many bars you want to look at. Let's say you're looking at a daily chart. Now, here's, here's the key. The key to the finding channeling stocks is this thing called minimum bounce-off level. I have this set to a 12 in this filter that I made. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you're looking at, say, support, you know, you got support and resistance. If you're looking at support, how many times has that stock bounced off the support during this step period? I'm asking it to find stocks that have bounced at least 12 times in a 60-bar period. That is a lot of bounces. So by juggling these numbers, you can come up with some really nice finds. You can find stocks that... Uh, you know, bounce, 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 like a bouncing ball along their support line. This essentially returns a nice list of, of strong channeling stocks. So what I did is I I gave it a pretty high percent. See, this, this uh, setting right here, it's saying that I want stocks no more than a certain percentage from support. Well... I gave it a pretty high number because I don't care if it's near if it's right at support or not. I only care that it's within reason if it's somewhere in that vicinity. So I did a five percent. But the the key is this number up here. Now some of you are going to say, "But Gar, what's this sensitivity?" The answer is that doesn't do much. Okay. Well, I believe what that is is it's it's when it's measuring your bounces, how many times it bounces. I think it's this number. Uh, the lower the number, that means the closer that thing has to be to support or resistance. Just leave it at 10. I, I find that this number doesn't make any difference. Anyhow, I want to show you this filter and how well it works. Let's go. I called it uh, Rolling Stocks. And I also published it on sharing in case anyone's interested. But you could just make your own from what I just showed you. As a matter of fact, I'm, what I'm going to cover in a second is you want to play around with it and tweak it to get the list that you like. So if I run rolling stocks, now understand the intention of this filter. The intention of this filter is to find good, strong channeling stocks. It's not to find quote-unquote trades. This is different than some of the other filters. Like, let's say you had that, like, for example, the heaven's sakes filter. That, that's good for finding a good long for, like, now. But rolling stocks, that's not its purpose. You might find some good ones, but its purpose is to find all the stocks that are trading in a channel very strongly. So then you walk through them and find good ones. I like to start by volume, so let's do that. Sometimes it's hard to see the channel unless you uh, unless you zoom out a little bit. You see that that's a pretty strong channel. You see how that where my where my crosshairs are. That's slanted, but it's bouncing off its channel. That's a nice channel. It looks like a like a sawtooth. You see what it does. See, look at that. This guy bounced many many times right there at that level, and it's doing it again. That would have been a nice trade right there. And so on and so on, you see. So you go through these. Oh, wow, BP looks really good, right? Smack on its channel. 
X looks good right smack on a channel. You see, there's there's its last channel right there. Um, that looks interesting. You see that? These are coming up. Oh, that's a beautiful channel. See, there's your bottom line and your top line. That stock just recently bounced off its channel and it wants to fly up now. That would have been a good one. Now, how do you trade these? Well, you find you find something that looks strong to you as a channel, and then you, uh, I would recommend, unless you, you're really gutsy, you know, if you're really gutsy, you can jump right in as soon as it hits that channel, if you can stand the possibility that it'll, you know, be groveling for a little while. But if you want to have less risk, you just turn on some indicators to confirm when it bounces. And, of course, my favorite is the MACD histogram. As one, as one example, that doesn't show a good histogram bounce there, but maybe something else does, like, for example, the stochastic. Yeah, stochastic does show a, a turn. You see, if you can look at that, if you zoom in on that, you see that? That stochastic has gone positive. And so the stochastic is a little bit a tighter indicator than the histogram. The stochastic tends to to uh, indicate a change sooner than the histogram. Well, uh, however, that red histogram is decaying, so that's a good sign. Anyhow, now here's what I wanted to uh, also see. That's a beautiful channeling stock right there. It just you see you just it just. Uh, you see, it's just constantly channeling. This is like a classic. Even though it, it falls out of the channel a couple times, you see, I can hold, see where my crosshair is right there. That stock is like a bouncing ball right on that line. It did the same thing recently right here. And that's only an $8 stock, and that looks like that bounced about 5 or 6%. This is particularly good in a, in a flat and sideways, sideways market. Now, one of the one of the things you're not going to like about the filter, especially if you you want like stock picks, that's a nice channel right there. Anyhow, <clears throat> all these are pretty good. Here's what you can do if you want more accuracy. You can start playing with the filter. Let's I'll show you some examples. Whoops, I don't want that. I want this. Um, for example, uh, bump up the bounce level. See, I'm, I'm only asking it for 10 bounces. Let's do uh, 15. In other words, I'm saying I want it to have bounced on the support line 15 times in the last 60 days. It'll give us way less stocks, but they'll probably see it only is giving us one. Yeah, you see that? See that, be see that beautiful thing? Look at that line. Um. It's just going smack, 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 right on that line. It's beautiful. In the top line, same thing. This one is uh, HBHC. That might be a good trade right now. You see that? Because uh, it's, right, it's right dead on. I mean, it's within pennies of its channel. It's beautiful. You got two things going for you. You got the stochastic, looks like it wants to go positive, but even that histogram suddenly has a green bar. What else can we see here? Um, let's try the SAR. Yeah, the SAR hasn't flipped yet, but I'll bet you it will tomorrow if that thing continues. Anyhow, you get the idea. Now, since we've only got one, that's kind of nitpick. That's kind of, uh, that might be too tight, so let's go and do uh, 13, the unlucky 13. <laughs> yeah, that's a little better. Now it's giving us four. So the whole thing I'm trying to show is you can play around with it until you get something you really like. That's a pretty good channel, but it's a little bit erratic. I, I can see why it picked it. You know, it looks kind of terrible. But it picked it because if you go back here, it's got many, many, many bounces along its line. So remember, we've got like 60 days that we're testing. That's the other thing you can tweak. You can make it less days. Ooh, look at that beautiful channel. 
Hey, in fact, this is the one I showed you uh, a couple frames ago on the slideshow. This is the one. Look at that nice channel there. 